this next poem, particularly fitting for the warm summer nights and summer days that we've been having recently, is called A Winter's Night. We can all dream of colder tomorrows. Carlyle once remarked upon this poem that it is the tenderest of tributes to the poet's genius. He writes that uh, whole homilies of mercy could be written about this poem, for it is the voice of mercy itself. Burns lives in sympathy. His soul rushes forth into all realms of being. Nothing that has existence can be indifferent to him. And the poem starts off with a quote from Shakespeare, King Lear, Act Three, Scene Four. For naked wretches, wheresoever you are, that bide the pelting of this pitiless storm. How shall your houseless heads and unfed sides, your lupid windowed raggedness, defend you from seasons such as these? When biting Boreas fell in dower, sharp shivers through the leafless bower, when Phoebus gives her short-lived glower, far south the lift, dim darkening through the flaky shower or whirling drift. A night the storm, the steeples rocked, poor labor sweet in sleep was locked, while burns with snowy wreaths upchoked, wild eddying swirl, or through the mining outlet balked, down headlong hurl. Listening, the doors and winnocks rattle, I thought me on the owry cattle, or silly sheep what bide this brattle, or winter war. And through the drift, deep laring spattle beneath the sky. Ill captain and bird, we helpless thing that in the merry months of spring delighted me to hear thee sing, what comes of thee? Where wilt thou cower thy chittering wing and close thy ee? Even you, on murdering errands toiled, lone from your savage homes exiled. The blood-stained roost, the sheep coat spoiled, my heart forgets, while pitiless the tempest wild sore on you beats. Now Phoebe in her midnight rain, dark muffled viewed the dreary plain, still crowding thoughts a pensive train rose in my soul, when on my ear this plaintive strain, slow, solemn, stole. Blow, blow, ye winds, with heavier gust, and freeze thou bitter biting frost. Descend, ye chilly smothering snows, not all your rage, as now united shows more hard unkindness, unrelenting vengeful malice unrepenting, than heaven illumined man on brother man bestows. See stern oppression's iron grip, or mad ambition's gory hand, sending like bloodhounds from the slip, Woe, want, and murder over a land. Even in the peaceful rural vale, Truth, weeping, tells the mournful tale. How pampered luxury, flattery by her side, The parasite, and poisoning her ear, With all the servile wretches in the rear, Looks o'er the proud property, extended wide, And eyes the simple rustic hind, Whose toil upholding the glittering sh upholds the glittering show, a creature of another kind, some coarser substance unrefined, placed for her lordly use thus far, thus vile below. Where, where is love's fond tender throw, with lordly honor's lofty brow? The powers you proudly own, is there, beneath love's noble name, can harbor dark the selfish aim to bless himself alone? Mark maiden innocence a prey, to love pretending snares. This boastful honor turns away, shunning soft pity's rising sway, regardless of the tears and unavailing prayers. Perhaps this hour, in misery's squalid nest, she strains your infant to her joyless breast, and with a mother's fear shrinks at the rocking blast. O ye who sunk in beds of down, Feel not a want, but what yourselves create. Think for a moment on his wretched fate, whom friends and fortune quite disown. Ill-satisfied, keen nature's clamorous call, stretched to his straw, he lays himself low. 
soft sleep, while through the ragged roof and chinky wall, Chilohris slumbers, piles the drifty heap. Think on the dungeon's grim confine, where guilt and poor misfortune pine. Guilt, erring man, relenting view. But shall thy legal rage pursue the wretch already crushed low by cruel fortune's undeserved blow? Affliction's sons are brothers in distress, a brother to relieve, how exquisite the bless. I hear, nay mare, for Chanticleer shook off the pouthery snow, and hailed the morning with a cheer, a cottage-rousing crow. But deep this truth impressed my mind, through all his works abroad, the heart, benevolent and kind, the most resembles God. And here we have an illustration of the sheep in the wintry blast.